Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 is an absolute menagerie of biblical imagery. Jesus says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves, therefore be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Not since the ark have so many animals been crammed into so short a scriptural space. Yet Jesus thinks we will be well prepared for the mission field if we consider these four creatures. There is the weakness of the sheep, the ferocity of, uh, the ferocity of wolves, the wisdom of serpents, and the innocence of doves. Yesterday we thought of sheep among wolves. That is Jesus' picture of mission. Astonishing, isn't it? We are not eagles among field mice, picking them off, or lions among antelope. We are the hunter, they are the prey. No, we are sheep among wolves. We are the prey. <laughs> to be a witness for Jesus, to testify to him, is to be extremely vulnerable. It is to risk persecution and even death. It's no, concept, it's no coincidence that the word witness in Greek is the word martyr. Witnesses to Jesus are martyrs. They do not love their lives so much as to shrink from death, as Revelation 12 puts it. So if that's how dangerous it is to be public about your Christianity, what advice does Jesus give? Well, he says, verse 16, Be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. What's the meaning of these two animals? Well, as far as serpents go, this is the only place in the Bible where serpents are held up as positive role models. The serpent is the devil himself. You can see that in Genesis 3 and Revelation 12 confirms it. Therefore, the serpent's pairing with the dove is very surprising. I mean, just a few chapters earlier, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove upon Jesus, Matthew 3 verse 16. So, serpents and doves are very different. One seems a good mascot of heaven, the other of hell. So how do serpents and doves relate? Well, serpents do have one positive attribute. The serpent, according to Genesis 3 verse 1, is subtle, crafty, wise. The serpent is famous for his powers of pers persuasion. He uses those powers for evil, but here Jesus says, You be shrewd, you be clever, you be wise, think. And at the same time, he says, like a dove, be completely innocent, completely above board, completely pure, but wise, like a serpent. It's interesting that the dove-like Holy Spirit is also known for his wisdom. So both the serpent and the dove are wise. Jesus is double underlining the need for careful thought as we speak up for Jesus. We don't need the cunning, underhandedness of the serpent, but we do need the purified wisdom of the Spirit. Jesus goes on in Matthew 10 to tell his disciples how this purified wisdom will look like under fire. He says, When they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. We need the wisdom of the Spirit so very, very much because mission is full of dilemmas. When should we make a stand and when should we let something slide? When should we speak up? When should we remain silent? When we do speak up, what should we say? Well, the Spirit will give us His wisdom. Think of Christ as He encountered the wolves. Remember how He often would avoid controversy, but then at other times He would stir it up. Remember how often He avoided capture by the authorities, and then at the end how He submitted to it when the time was right. Remember how on trial he stayed silent, but then when he spoke, he had unanswerable wisdom. Remember his total lack of self-justification, and at the same time, how his accusers ended up being self-condemned. Remember how he entrusted himself to him who judges justly, as 1 Peter 2 verse 23 puts it. And remember how he died. To the very end, he was wise as a serpent, and innocent as a dove. And at the very end, we saw that even this wisdom did not prevent him being torn like a sheep among wolves. That's the thing about the wisdom Jesus is recommending here. It's not a way of avoiding suffering. Often Christians seek for the Spirit's wisdom as a way to plot a trouble-free course through this world. There is no trouble-free course for sheep among wolves. But, since we can only be martyred once, let us sheep pray to the Good Shepherd.
that we might know His dove-like purity in the midst of our trials, and His serpentine wisdom to pick the right battles and to make them count.